always make the right decision, drawing from this very large reservoir of our unconscious mind, listen to your body. How do we listen to our body to make the right decision? I will give you three techniques right now. This has helped me in many areas of my life, and I'm very excited to share with you today. Life will always throw unexpected circumstances at you, and it wants to see if you can still stay connected to yourself and to your inner voice, to see if you can still hear it among all the stress, no matter what else is happening. Here's how. There are a few parts of the body to watch. The easiest and the clearest part of the body is the chest. So right about in here. When we meditate, we breathe into the chest, we breathe out of the chest. We're building awareness, sensitivity of this area. Anything you do that leads to tightening of the chest is going to end up being the wrong thing for you. Maybe it seems perfect on the surface. Someone seems so nice, so kind. The deal seems so lucrative, but you have tightening in your chest. Don't do it. There's two hiking paths. You look at one, you have a tightening in your chest. You look at the other, you feel lightness inside. Go toward the one with lightness inside, even if the other one looks prettier. Always run the chest test through everything you do. And if you're doing something through inner pain, and people do, they have inner pain and they still do it, don't. If you feel inner pain and real tightening or even like your heart kind of hurts, don't do it. Trust that pain. Believe that pain. So when you're thinking about a decision, maybe you're like in the car or you're walking somewhere, you say, do I do this? Do I do that? Do I go left? Do I go right? If you're thinking about doing it and there's an openness in the chest, you can breathe easily. It feels natural. That is the right decision for you to make. Your chest will feel open. It's easy to breathe. And then it's the right thing for you. And if your chest is tight and tense, don't do it. It's wrong. Always listen to what this area of the body has to say. It will always have an opinion. Just make it a habit to check in. Check in, check in, check in, and you won't go wrong. So the second test, the second place to pay attention to when you're making a decision are the very soles of your feet. Feel your feet on the ground. And as you're thinking about this thing, think, do my feet feel grounded or do my feet kind of feel like cotton? Imagine one scenario in your mind, see how your feet feel. Do your feet feel stable? Are your feet in touch with the earth? Then it's the right thing to do. Imagine the other scenario, see how your feet feel. Do they feel physically strong or do they feel weak? Always pick the path where your feet feel strong, rounded, where you feel rooted in the earth. And you'll see an enormous difference between the two scenarios usually. So that is the feet test. And test number three is a general test. When you decide to do certain things, your body will just feel at ease. And when you decide to do other things, your body just won't feel at ease. You'll feel in your plate, in your element, or you'll feel awkwardness. I call it the gift of awkwardness. When there's like a tension, a freezing, a kind of not quite pleasant, off feeling in the body, that is your best roadmap. If your body feels at ease, do it. If you think about it and your body feels kind of awkward or like you're kind of forcing it, don't do it. Your body is the best navigator. Trust your body. You'll always make the right decision. And this is true in business. This is true in love life. This is true with your kids. I am always in contact with my body when I do a small thing like, do I send this email right now? I check with my body. When I negotiate a deal, when I hire someone, when I meet someone new and decide whether or not to collaborate with that person, any decision I make, even the small ones, like I drive around and if I look at a turn and I feel like I need to make that turn, I do, even if it's a longer route. When I walk the streets of New York, if something in me calls to walk on 2nd Avenue downtown instead of 3rd Avenue, I'll walk on 2nd Avenue and I have a really cool record of bumping into the exact people I want to bump into at the exact time I need to bump into them on the streets of New York City. And it has happened multiple times where I've reached out to someone, I wasn't able to get a hold of them, and I just like walk into them in the city because I do intuitive walking. There's a lot of ways you can get from place A to place B in the city, and I pick the one that resonates with my body. So listen to the body, and it's not intellectual, it's not logical, but it is such an art form. And remember that the mind can have ideas that are other people's. The mind can reflect views of a lot of other people, but those other people don't have the full context in mind, only you do. The mind may not always be fully honest because it might be relying on theories that are outdated. It might be relying on ideas that don't apply to you. The body is always honest. The body is always more sensitive. The body can unlock all the wealth of your unconscious wisdom. 
and your body will express everything, all those 11 million bits of information that the subconscious catches. And these may be things you might not even be able to put into words, but they work and they will direct your life in the best possible way. And the last test for you, when you decide to do certain things, your body will feel like energy is running through it. Your level of energy will become higher and yet you will still feel calm. So with the right decision, the, the energy is there, but there's also a calm there. Those are the right things for you. With other things, you'll think about them and it'll feel like your energy stopped. Or your energy will feel kind of zappy and uneven. Your energy will feel rushed or like there's adrenaline. Those things are also not for you. Even calm, balanced energy in the body, those are the right decisions. If you follow these instructions, you will make the right choices and this will lead to your true wishes coming true. And if you want to learn eight more practices that will help make your wishes come true, sign up to participate in the full program called Willpower, Wishes, and Endless Energy. You will get more techniques, and the link to that is below. Or if you want to chat, here's my email, and we can do a one-on-one -on -one consultation and talk about techniques for you. I look forward to supporting you in the future. Let me know how these practices go for you, and I hope to see you soon. Hey, it's Elizabeth. My goal is to help you follow the path to happiness with these videos. There's always something new each week. Subscribe to this YouTube channel so you see them. I'll see you soon.